Hello dear friends, may God bless you all, may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Spirit that resurrected our Lord, the Spirit that has been resurrecting those who believe in His Son. This Spirit, which is the Spirit of creation, is the same Spirit that said, let there be light, and there was light. It's the same Spirit that said, let there be dry land, and dried land came into existence. Dear friends, this Spirit, whose words have the power to bring into existence the things that do not exist, may this Spirit come upon you and bring you a new life, a life that you didn't know existed, that you may have this life, the life, the plenitude of life within you. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And he wants you to have this more abundant life but please, pay attention. It's within you. He wants that inside of you. Jesus didn't come to give us material conditions. He came to give us eternal life. And the material conditions, the wealth, they will all be left behind here. You know that. We all know this. So, May this spirit, the spirit of life, the spirit of life, may he come upon your life, not only upon you, but may he through you be spread for your whole family, your neighbors, your circle of friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, and even your adversaries and enemies, but may everyone see the light of our Lord Jesus Christ through you, because the energy, the power of this light is the Holy Spirit. When He fills us, then that's it. So the first thing that happens when He comes upon us, is that He gives us peace. That internal peace that is personal, that no one understands, no one is able to perceive, but only see that when a person has peace in, in the Holy Spirit, then this peace straight away brings joy, because which soul doesn't long for peace? Which person does not want peace? There are people who say, I would give everything to have a minute of peace. But Jesus doesn't want to give just a minute of peace. Either he gives eternal peace or he gives nothing at all. That's how it is. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the Spirit of Peace. And when you receive the Spirit of Peace, you become peace itself wherever you go. And obviously, this peace is followed by joy. The joy, the rejoicing of having God's presence, the joy of this assurance, of this personal conviction, that not even death can take away. Yes, dear friends, may this happen with all of you. 
because this is the reason why we are here to bring this understanding this faith this knowledge that is fundamental in order for there to be light and life and peace inside of you praise god anyway let's now meditate on the word of god how wonderful it's so good it's such a pleasure it's a huge pleasure to speak of what God has given us. How wonderful. I was meditating on a few things here in the Holy Scriptures. However, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit enlightened me to see this text very short but very powerful because it has caused me much anguish the fact that in our midst amongst Christians amongst evangelicals especially and I mentioned the evangelicals because I know what it's like so amongst the church there are many people who receive magnificent blessings, extraordinary. However, when we least expect, many of these people, not all of them, but many of them, I'd say the majority, the majority forget about the blessing. Or rather, they forget the blesser and they focus only on taking care of their blessings. They are only handling the blessings and they leave the blesser, the fountain aside. Unfortunately, this happens a lot inside of the churches. And it's worth saying here the following, that in the world, in the world of those who believe in God, in the universe of those who believe in God, or rather, those who say to believe in God, pay close attention, in the world of the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God here on earth, which is when we are subject or submissive to live as servants of the king of God's kingdom. When we are under his governing, then we see as well many things that sadden us, many things which try it tries to steal the joy that God has given us. However, what can we do? What can we do? We can only wait for the return of our Lord so that all these may come to an end already. So the text that the Holy Spirit showed me is concerning the end of times, these last times, in the prophecy that he gave about the end of times of wars and rumors of wars, etc., then he said like this, there's a, a moment that he said, and because lawlessness will abound, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. The love of many will grow cold. And these many that Jesus is talking about are not the unbelievers. It's not concerning those who do not fear God. 
it's not about those who are children of perdition. No. That's where the problem is. That is why it's so sad, because these many that will grow cold in their love, these many are those who are inside of the churches, or the unchurched ones, or those who are leaving their faith is still on the fence. You know what I mean. Those who still have a foot in church and another one in the world. So he said, many, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Which means that amongst those that we live with, with the brothers or the bad brothers even, many, the majority, I would say, the majority is lost. That's the reality. However, they are still there, practicing their religious beliefs, involved with that faith, that faith that apparently is supernatural. Many, many have their heart cold or they are growing cold in their faith. He said, because lawlessness will abound. Let's understand here what lawlessness is. Let's understand this. Yesterday, we spoke about that text of First Peter, which reads the following, chapter 2. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, See that the Apostle Peter is addressing these words, I mean, the Holy Spirit. Peter is just being used by the Holy Spirit here. So he says, here he is speaking to those who are inside, within the church environment, the Christian church, those who say they believe in Jesus those who are always there warming up a seat in church. However, unfortunately, with a heart that is cold, why is it? Why do these people receive extraordinary blessings? Why do these people come on? They've achieved extraordinary healings magnificent transformation in their life. They used to sleep on the streets. Now they are business people, successful. Others were condemned to death with a cancer and so many other diseases, and they were healed. Many. Why many? Why the love of these many grew cold? Why is it? That's the question. Jesus is talking about the last days here, which is what we are going through now. You know that. You who are watching me, you know an ex. You know at least one person that used to be in the faith. It doesn't matter the church. It doesn't matter the denomination. The church of the Lord Jesus... The true church of the Lord Jesus is spiritual, which is the kingdom of God. Only those who have the Holy Spirit are part of the church of the Lord Jesus. The spiritual church is part of the kingdom of God. It's inserted in the kingdom of God. This church is blameless. This church is perfect. 
because it is the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ, the groom that is coming soon. So, this church is perfect. But when we speak of church in general, I'm talking about physical churches, not the spiritual ones. It's church whose names are out there, church A, B, or C. The spiritual church is the kingdom of God. The spiritual church is led by the Holy Spirit. The spiritual church, the church of the Lord Jesus, is blameless. This one doesn't grow cold. The, the love is hot in there. And because of this church that still resists iniquity, that resists this filthy world, it's because of this church that Jesus hasn't come back yet in order for this church to give a chance to those who are outside. Do you understand what I mean? However, the physical church is full of commitments. It is committed to evil. That's it. Disgracefully, that's the reality. Because when Peter said, laying aside all malice, malice is evil. What is malice? Malice, for example, it's when a person looks at another with eyes of criticism or look, there she goes, look at how she's dressed, look at how she behaves, and they start to point a finger and judge and condemn, thinking that they are perfect, that they are clean, but only the fact that they are malicious they show that they are in the kingdom of this world and not in the kingdom of God. Laying aside all malice, the Holy Spirit is speaking to people of the church, in the church, the physical church, where the spiritual church is also inserted. But of course, that the physical church is composed by people who have malice, people who deceive people who pretend, people who are envious, people that speaks ill of others, of people who live in the kingdom of the devil. But they are there in the church, amongst those who belong to the spiritual church. It's the chaff. The chaff. Wherever there is wheat, there will be chaff as well. And unfortunately, Jesus said that when he said here that the love of many will grow cold, many will grow cold, he's saying here that these are those who one day were chaff, then they were transformed into wheat. However, due to a malice and deceit, and a lie, and murmuring, and envy, and lust towards what belonged to others, and they were looking at other people, and judging them, etc., etc., etc. These people went back to the condition of chaff. Bishop, is it possible? Well, I've seen many people, you know how many pastors, bishops, pastors' wives, and I speak here about those who are in the universal church of the kingdom of God all over the world. But you know, you've seen and you are seeing many pastors, former pastors, because when they are caught, when we find out that the person is not living up according to the standards of the faith they learned, then the church removes this person from the altar because they have no conditions to give anything to people. They need to receive. They need salvation. So they have to go after their own salvation. So these people obviously are excluded naturally. 
And when we don't know, when we have no knowledge of those who deceive, those who pretend, those who are malicious, those who are envious, who are in our midst, preaching the gospel, pretending to be pretending to be the wheat, but being the personification, the personification of chaff itself. When this happens, and we don't know, then we do not worry. We are not looking for, for, for this. We, we don't have a magnifying glass trying to see who is who. No, we don't. The church, dear friends, the universal church of the kingdom of God is not an institution of men. It's not mine. No, not at all. I sleep peacefully. I wake up peacefully. I live full of peace and I keep my peace regardless of what the deceivers do out there. I know they do. I know. However, I also know that God has already has already professed the sentence for the deceivers. He said, Cursed be the deceiver. The deceiver may deceive me, may deceive you and everyone for some time. But there will come a time in which they will be excluded by the Lord himself, by the spirit of the groom himself, which is Jesus. The Holy Spirit himself will remove these chaffs from our midst. But Bishop, why is that chaff in our midst still? Come on, we talk so much about love. Dear friends, pay close attention to the following. When Jesus called the disciples, he chose the disciples and Judas was in their midst, who eventually became the traitor. Didn't he know that Judas was in their midst? Of course he knew. And Jesus was tolerant towards Judas. He was stealing, he was a thief. Judas Iscariot used to steal the offerings. He was a thief. Jesus knew about this, but Jesus didn't say anything. He kept quiet, tolerating, 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 to see, to give him. He knew that he would be condemned, but he was giving him what? A chance to convert. Jesus gave chances for Judas to convert until the last moment when Judas came and kissed Jesus pointing him that he was the Jesus of Nazareth and the soldiers came and arrested Jesus Jesus said to him like this Judas Jesus said to him friend Jesus called him friend Friend, he said, friend, he was so tolerant, so tolerant that even up to that moment, he, Jesus, was a friend of Judas. But Judas was an enemy of Jesus. But still, Jesus tolerated Judas until the end. And in the end, he still called him friend. The same thing happens in the universal church of the kingdom of God. We have many Judases. I don't know who they are. Uh, when I know a Judas that is in front of me, then I can remove him and I will, I will not tolerate him at all. This tolerance that Jesus had, I won't have. I will not wait for him to recover and then continue committing mistakes in our midst and bearing a bad testimony of his character in the church. No, I won't tolerate this. Lord, forgive me, but I, I won't tolerate. That's why he doesn't even let me know. Because 
Praise God. Hallelujah. But it's His church and He takes care of it. He, He is the Lord of the church, of the universal church of the kingdom of God. He and no one else. And He looks after it. Those that are bad and He tolerates for a while until the right moment when this element will be removed and the pure church will remain strong. And that's what Jesus is saying. Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So these people, they've had experiences with God's love, with God's mercy, with His compassion. God has been tolerating them. Those who were still not found, God is tolerating them as it was with Judas. But sooner or later they will leave. Why lawlessness? What is lawlessness then, Bishop? Lawlessness, dear friends, is all sort of injustice. It is, for example, if I condone or accept in my mind a thought or in my heart, I accept anything evil towards somebody else, an evil thought, or I judge, or I'm suspicious of someone who is of God. This is malice. This is injustice. If by any chance I plan in my heart, oh, I want to enter the work of God because I want to have, my aim is to have a comfortable life. I see others living comfortably and I want the same as well. So if I have this within me, a, a goal, a desire, a dream, a personal desire that is an iniquity, it's wrong, it's an injustice. This is lawlessness. Lawlessness, dear friends. Lawlessness, sin, transgressions of God's law. All of these is the reason why our Lord Jesus died on the cross for us. And once He died for me, I died with Him and He saved me. And I live to live what He gave me and bring to others the same thing. So, when Jesus says, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And once love is cold, game over. That's why you've seen people who even want to go back to their first love. They want to go back, but they can't because they have rooted within themselves that malice, that deceit. They do not want to sacrifice, for example, a resentment towards others, towards the pastor, towards the bishop, towards the wife of this and that, or bishop or pastor. These people do not want to let go. They do not want to convert. Jesus is giving them a chance. He's tolerating them. They are in our midst. They are out there. They are out there. Like chaff amongst the wheat. But the harvest time will come. And the chaff will be gathered up and thrown in the fire. Jesus said, because lawlessness will abound, this lawlessness is multiplied inside of the churches. Do you know why, dear friends? Because many people are malicious. The devil blows that malice. The person accepts that thought. He allows it into their heart and the malice is there towards somebody else. Deceit, lies, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. My goodness, this is too much. The person 
who is a hypocrite. Oh my goodness. I won't even say, and I can't even say this, but it's very difficult for a hypocrite to be saved. Because this was the spirit that Jesus found amongst the religious Jews, the children in the flesh of Abraham, the descendants of Abraham, rather. That's the reality. He saw those rebellious children who would worship him with their lips. They would worship him with their lips, but their heart was far from him. And there's a lot of these inside of the churches. That's why also we have a faith, a focus, a goal. And as long as the person does not receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, any miracle, any wonder that God may have done in their life, we will still not be enough for us. The person has to be born again. The person has to be born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. They have to be spirit, which means they have to be spiritual. They have to die to this world and be born again to God. The person has to be born of the water and of the spirit. Otherwise, they will not enter the kingdom of God. Peter then says, it's interesting, he says, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the pure milk. You see, like newborn babes, innocent, like children. As children, right? Newborn babes desire what? The pure milk. What is this pure milk? Is this intelligent faith. It's the faith that thinks, that considers, that evaluates. You put things on a scale. You put your life, your thoughts on a scale. Your goals, your objectives, your dreams. And you consider them according to God's dreams. If they don't match, then you have to change. He says like this, the pure milk of the word, it's the word of God that cannot be falsified or impure. The word that comes from my mouth shall not return to me void, says the Lord. It cannot be impure. So whoever believes in the word, from the word will receive life. The word guarantees life. But those who don't believe. So as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that is not impure that you may grow thereby meaning by this pure milk by this word you will grow thereby you grow and then he adds if indeed you have tasted that the lord is gracious to taste that the Lord is gracious is when a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit, which is the reason why we have the campaign of Israel, the Holy Spirit, for people to receive the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can receive the whole world. You can gain the entire world, but will be to no avail. First, you must receive the spiritual so that you can keep the material. Receive the material and keep it. If you don't first receive the spiritual, the material will deteriorate. So when a person tastes that the Lord is gracious, is good, it's when they receive the Holy Spirit because then they are called children. God himself calls them children, my children. This is the glory of God in us here in this world. You being considered as a daughter, a son of the Most High. If this hasn't happened, it, 
it only happens when a person receives the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no way. Without the Holy Spirit, Jesus will be tolerating us. But with the Holy Spirit, then that's it. You are already on his side. You are no longer on the fence. You've already embraced your faith. And you no longer live in lawlessness. But you live in the presence of God. And you exude, you shine this light. And you are the salt of the earth in this world. You make the difference in this world. This is what God wants you to be. He wants you, dear friends, He wants you to sanctify His name here on earth much more than worship Him because it's easy to worship Him with our lips, but the difficult thing is to do so with our hearts. And He wants you to sanctify His name. How do we sanctify His name? Oh, we're going to talk about this tomorrow. Okay? May God bless you, and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. May the Holy Spirit enlighten you. May He help you understand and not let you forget. May the Holy Spirit come upon you and make you a new creation. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Amen.